Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Prime Talk. Today I'm really excited to have a special guest. Today I'm having Guy Heritz. Guy is the founder and CEO of RPG Ecom, which is a leading Amazon services agency for sellers. Guy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure, really. Um, so today's show is going to be all about the Guy Heritz, uh, you know, a story. So you're going to share with us who are you, where are you from, where were you born, where did you grow up, um, how did you begin your professional career. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so thanks. Thank you once again uh, for having me. I have a pretty interesting story because I was jumping from one country to another. So I will start with that. So uh, I'm 33 years old right now, based in Israel, living next to uh, Tel Aviv. Um, but actually, I was born in the Soviet Union uh, in Moldova, when it still was Soviet Union, uh, 87. Uh, but really, when I was really small, three, three and a half, uh, we immigrated to Israel with all my family. Thought that this is, will be my final destination, but no. Uh, when I was eighth grade, my parents moved again, uh, this time to Bulgaria, to Eastern Europe. Hold on, when you uh, moved from um, Moldova to Israel, what year was that? 1990? It was 91. 91. This is after the Soviet Union basically dissolved? Exactly, just after. Got Actually, it. my family even moved before, my grandparents, even one year before, but we were just waiting for my father to uh, graduate from, the, from college. Uh, and then we moved, grew up in the northern of Israel uh, until... Uh, Which part? Many... What's, what's the name of the city uh, in the north? Carmiel. Carmiel, <laughs> right. I think yeah, there's, a, uh, there's a few uh, interesting factories over there uh, with Elbit. <laughs> they, they make weapons. Yes, stuff. yes, you are, you are absolutely right. And there is also textile there. And my father was working in the, one of the textile uh, leading uh, Delta company. Um, yeah, Delta and... textiles, they do actually, I don't know if anybody knows this, but they actually manufacture for Victoria's Secrets. Um, exactly. they, they manufacture, you know, um, you know, garments like bras, brasillas, uh, uh, not only actually that their biggest client, which is takes 97% of the share of the production of the socks, for example, it's Nike. Nike. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nike. I was uh, laughing with my father, father that if Nike will just, you know, withdraw their uh, contract, <laughs> the Delta socks is collapsed, will <laughs> definitely collapse, but no, they're still there. And, uh, so we moved to Bulgaria following my father. He just moved there to be the general manager of Delta in Bulgaria. And I found myself in ninth grade in, in a country in Eastern Europe, no, no nothing. I and think well, Bulgaria, was... the capital city in Sofia? No, no, actually, no, it was the fifth city, I think, uh, called Rusa. And it was on the, on the border with Romania, on the Danuva River. Mm -hmm. And it was like something like two hours from Varna, two hours from Bucharest. And um, I, I think my, my entrepreneurial journey started there because I already you know, find myself in 15 years old trying to manipulate my way with people with new school with you know yeah, adapting my, for the my, second my time path. yeah think about it for a second you're adapting for the second time with the new culture new language new mentality new everything uh, for the second time so you have to you know uh, quickly adapt Absolutely. and evolve and and find your position and find success within that uh, sphere yeah and actually i needed to be there only three years the for the initial contract of my parents were for three years so i needed to uh, come back into the last year my 12th grade to israel but it didn't happen they stayed there for 20 years actually they're still there oh they're still there really <laughs> yeah so uh, a three a three-year <laughs> event became a, a you know a more than 20 year uh, and still going event yeah. for your parents but for yourself you left a, a certain uh, when did you leave bulgaria after three years or yeah, I graduated from uh, an English language school uh, in Bulgaria. Uh, we started like 50 50 in Bulgarian and in English. Right. And, and you then, graduated high school there, right? Yes, high school. And I thought I'm uh, going to pursue my uh, education in Germany. Actually, all the Bulgarians are going to uh, uh, study actually abroad. Um, I wanted to go in the same path, but as you know, in Israel, we have the mandatory army and military service. And uh, I, I actually could, you know, uh, postpone it a little bit, but I, I did want to go and study business administration. But then something happened with my patriotic feel feelings and I, I decided to come back to Israel. Uh, actually, it was uh, 2002 and um, I, I just left. My parents, uh, unfortunately, couldn't come with me because there was a contract, but I just came back and I was a lonely soldier. Soldier, And this is for like third adaption, <laughs> the adaptation to, yeah. to the situation. <laughs> and coming back to Israel after four years, Exactly, right away to the army 
the military service with this uh it was really crazy it was a so you did three years in the army in the idf the israeli defense forces yeah actually it was a little bit more it was five years i, I signed up for more i was uh, uh, an officer i'm a captain in reserve and um i, I just uh, handled rookies and and we did like basic training for uh, non-combat soldiers in israel so this was my uh um second stage where i can when I felt a little bit that education training and all of this is part of also of me. Um, and then I, after graduation, I knew I'm, I'm going to politics. I really, really was into <laughs> politics. Hold on. So, so, what, I, uh, so after you finished the military service, uh, let's put some years on this. So which year did you uh, finish your service, the five-year uh, service? 2012. 2012, about years ago. You did five years yeah. in the military. You know, you took yeah. the you took the heavy load of becoming an officer and you know raising generations of you know new soldiers. Uh, so thank you for that for that service. Uh, all right, so 2012 somehow leaving the non or uh, polit- you know the army or at least uh, army organizations are known to be non political. Nevertheless, after you graduate from there, uh, you f- feel like you know I want to dive in all into the politics. What what was that? Uh, where, where did that come from? Mm, I think. In the four years I was abroad, I had these patriotic feelings for Israel and I was really missing everything that was connected to Israel and I really wanted to do something about it. I was full of ideology and and wanted to change things. And uh, but that the, was my ideology, passion. Yeah, well, what would you, what would you, if you had to touch where that's coming from your ideology, it would just be because, you know, you uh, were born and raised in Soviet Union and your parents uh, felt they need to go to Israel because they feel, you know, this is their land or more about economic opportunity. What was the... Uh, uh, I think time... Zionism was the the main uh, motivator for me. For, that was uh, in your family, or you found it at some point uh, no, over time. That was only mine. I think mm-hmm. uh, also the five years in the army did itself. You know, they added in, into the recipe and uh, all the challenges. And of course, Israel is a very challenging country from all the aspects. And uh, when combining all of this, I really wanted to change things. And of course, it was not only. Uh, about politics, economy, and, and culture, and everything. And uh, I pursued the same, uh, a BA in uh, Diplomacy and Strategy and Political Science. And uh, in Oh, so uh, 2012, you went to school. Uh, you said, if I yeah. want to enter into politics, actually, let me go to, you know, university and, and learn, uh, you know, political studies. Yes, yes. Uh, right away, I jumped into college, three years, uh, graduated, uh, uh, with distinction, by the way, with diplomacy. Uh, I was traveling in my last year doing diplomacy, uh, public relations for Israel. And uh, that was my passion. I was also- What year was that, 2015, 2016? Yeah, uh, 2015, I, gr- I graduated and uh, jumped into politics right away to one of the parties in Israel, uh, if you know Lieberman. And- um, uh, Yeah, I so what's the name into... of the party, uh, Lieberman's par- party? Is Israel our home? Israel Betenu. So, Israel Betenu. Uh, Israel is our yeah. home. It's yeah. So it's it's a uh, right wing the party. Yes. And very patriotic I, party. Uh, uh, more on the right uh, wing side of the map uh, in Israel. Mm-hmm. A political yeah. map. Uh, so how did you roll into that organization? I mean that uh, that party. I had a friend in the con call in college that was uh, participating in uh, and also field work in the, in the party, and they started to uh, uh, take me with him, and I. Fell in love with the with the action, with the <laughs> emotions, with everything. I was, you know, on crossroads, yelling in uh, demonstrations and everything. One of those, and uh, I started my my uh, actual my internship already during the second year of my work, and uh, and after that in the third year, and after I graduated, I jumped in the parliament uh, to the Knesset. So I went uh, working as a parliamentary assistant to one of them case, and um, so you were going yeah. daily to work in the Israeli parliament. Yeah, I thought this was my be my path definitely. I always like had this kind of uh, you know entrepreneurial business mindset behind it, but when in in the in the college years it was put aside for a new passion. Um, and when going into this inside the parliament, then something happened. Okay, the, the really? shift was there. Okay. Yes, because because there suddenly there was a huge gap between the ideology that I came with. And to the practicum that is going on, you know, in the corridors of the parliament. And I, I figure out two things. First of that, first is that uh, to be public servant for the uh, public, you need to kind of sign a contract, public contract with them. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just getting worse. I, I say I say it like this because you start from the bottom, and, and every time you 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 know uh, raise yourself or become a you know member Knesset or or um. 
uh, a yeah. minister or parliament or a minister or something like that. It's just the responsibility, the time consuming is much more. And I, I, I am a family guy. And this was like a, a first uh, stop mm -hmm. mark for me, a sign for me to stop and think. And, and also I, I figure out that I'm, I think I'm too good as a person to be, you know, you need to be a little bit dirty in politics. You, mm -hmm. you can't that you can't, you can't you cannot avoid the dirty deal. politics that's in politics. So yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's part part of you. two two components that uh, shifted your, your mindset. One is when you realize how demanding, right? The, the roles are yeah. to, to be a public servant is, and it's ruthless and it's brutal and it's not stopping ever. It's just, you know, when mm -hmm. you, once you're the mix, it's, it's high pressure constantly. Right. Uh, yeah. And then the second component to add to that is that, Sometimes you have to, uh, you know, engage yourself in dirty politics and, and tricks and shticks to stay, uh, is to stay, uh, to keep your position or stay alive. And exactly. that's really the nature of politics. Uh, and it's not so um, simple to, uh, it's for ethical people to fully exactly. uh, immerse yourself in and, and feel comfortable in that position. So you, you threw yourself to the water, you tested it and you realized I can swim here, but I'd rather not, uh, you know, swim in a dirty swamp. I'll find a cleaner waters where I can, um, you know, clean in an ethical way and, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, put all my uh, energy and passion into something that uh, it's clean it's uh, and has uh, exactly. a lot of potential of helping others and hopefully making good income yes and and there the the shift happened just before i left uh, the parliament uh, with a friend that was doing uh, engaging in with drop shipping uh, this is, was the era of drop shipping from amazon to ebay what year was that the year of uh, drop shipping from amazon to, to ebay 2015 16 mm -hmm. 17 before uh, ebay started to close uh, uh, accounts for people who are doing uh, uh, drop shipping but this was the first time i heard about e-commerce about online entrepreneurship about online business and I, I started with that. I took a course and uh, I established my first business in, in eBay. And um, the work was interesting, but too much work for little margins. Uh, and uh, also there was uh, some changes in eBay and the policy. And um, But explain to us for just a short you know, moment, what is the business model of, of dropping? You know, so anybody in the audience is not too familiar, mm -hmm. um, drop shipping from Amazon to eBay, what, is this, what does this all mean? Well, just finding a product um, in, on, on Amazon, selling the same product on eBay with a little bit of margin for me, let's say for $1 more. And whenever somebody buys from me on eBay, I just fulfill the order from Amazon to his. So once you order from, from eBay, you go to Amazon, you buy it, and you put the, the address of, of the, yeah. the customer from eBay and ship it there. But how do you find those products where there's a price gap yourself or there's uh, tools? Well, there are some tools, some methods. Uh, I was studying some uh, strategies. Um, there was some really cool tools uh, in that time, some monitors that monitoring also the prices, the changes, everything. And it was pretty easy, but you, you, needed to, you need to really invest in it and to scale it to a big amount of, uh, of products in order to see significant, significant uh, uh, margins. And, and then if I, I heard about Amazon FBA. This was really the, the entrance of FBA to Israel. Uh, 2016, the first course made it uh, into Israel. Um, and um, I, I just jumped over also on this. And I said, OK, let's figure out. Maybe it will be much more suitable for me. Actually, I entered it with my girlfriend. Now today is my wife. Mm -hmm. I, I even, I, even uh, I, I was. Um, Reminding him her that we did it, we split it even the course 50 50. It was that, <laughs> it was that it's moment. Like go, instead of going on a day, let's go to a course and split the bill and keep it romantic, but also keep yeah. the business. It, it was really funny, but uh, yeah, we was living, living together, starting, uh, you know, working in a, some uh, work uh, just to uh, hold up the house and the home and in the nights and the evenings, starting uh, Amazon. And uh, it was really cool. It took me seven months to launch my first product on Amazon, and I did all the opposite things from what was learned. Like the the course said, no technological products, no you know complicated, no uh, expensive products first time. And I had a really good feeling about uh, Bluetooth headphones. It was the year that Apple released their um, their phones with no you know connection. Uh, it all went to Bluetooth, and it was a really good uh, um, actually. Uh, product and um, i brought it just before q4 and uh, it was q4 of 2017 or 16 16 i think yes and it was a uh, um really hit i, I brought 1000 pieces sold everything in one uh, in 45 days 
and I thought, hey, hell, this is this is this is Amazon. I, I didn't figure out this is Q4, and it's happening only only in, in December. And I really freaked out, and I and ordered the double amount of two thousand uh, earbuds, and it was like thirty uh, k. Thirty thousand dollars. My mind, thirty thousand dollars. It was all my money over mm -hmm. then, and um, and then you know January came. And silence, and silence, silence, silence yeah. and huge amount, amount of, you know, uh, feedbacks and bad reviews came and um, I didn't, you know, uh, didn't do a, an inspection in China and all, all the lessons that I, I had to learn, I, I learned in, in this way, the bad way. And I, it took me after that almost a year to sell off, you know, all, all, all the stock that was stuck there. And uh, this is actually where Natty five 90 percent of you know nine out of ten sellers are pulling back their uh, uh their business and so yeah um, i took a hit you know i started you know as, as a as a wonderful um promise i took a few definitely. punches a few hits and i think you know i'll try to look for something else yeah but i, I thought myself what should i go back to parliament what what can <laughs> i do like i was really passionate about that i i was studying non-stop and I really wanted to to do it to do it like second round and uh, to do it better. And um, actually, at this moment, it was a really hard moment because uh, you know, as an entrepreneur, you need to have your surroundings surrounding a very supporting environment. And I didn't have this one from my own family. And um, you know, what you, Russian, oh, let's touch that. Let's touch, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's touch that. So you mean your family that uh, says, uh, you know, keep doing this uh, entrepreneurial stuff. You know, stay in business. You took a hit. Keep going. And they, they were more in the impression of, you know, you get a profession, you get a job, maybe big company, or maybe in politics, a government job, stuff like that. That was kind yeah. of the discussions. Yeah, stop playing with your PC. <laughs> 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 that, that, that was the phrase. And go go get a real job. You started like the, the most expensive private college in Israel for what? <laughs> and this was the, the sayings. And um, it was really hard, but I really, really felt that, first of all, this is the future. Like e-commerce, I felt this is the future. Now we know it's the future. This is, It's actually the present, but it's already it's also the future still. And I really uh, also learned from my lessons, from my mistakes. And, and I knew that in order to be better, I need to just do the same, but not, you know, going and, and falling in the same uh, holes. And um, I took uh, uh, actually a loan uh, a little bit from the bank, a little bit from my parents, and and I said, okay, I'm investing. That's impressive. All again. Even though they were not really supportive on a discussion level, yeah. on a financial level, they said, here, son, here's our money. We believe that, in you. That's actually happened money talks. because they, they saw how hard I'm working, really hard. Like very nice. 24, 20 hours per day. It was all about either working on a physical work to get the money to invest in Amazon or leave, mm -hmm. or just uh, working. Uh, on my business mm -hmm. and um yeah they supported uh they supported and um the second round uh, in the second product it was a whole different thing I, so I this is already i think we're brand. touching 2018 right 2018 yeah. you started late 2016 uh you started with a you know good momentum because it was you know christmas q4 then 2017 you're stuck uh throughout the year with inventory you're you know picking up the the, the pieces together trying to get out of that situation but 2018 Hopefully the comeback. actually I didn't I didn't I didn't wait it for one year with the Bluetooth. Uh, I started right away with, with a new brand. Mm -hmm. uh, just in, in in between, I had to you know uh, uh, get rid of the earbuds. But I, I jumped in really quick uh, afterwards, like in the second quarter after the Christmas. Mm -hmm. And um, I started from scratch, but that's this time with a, like a brand started in a really like on a branding. Uh, invested a lot of it, and it was uh, arts and crafts things like office supplies. Called it Artit. Uh, lots of uh, uh, actually, this was the idea of my wife. She saw that uh, you guys in the states you really like the baby shower and the uh, and the uh, uh, gender reveal party. Something that we don't have here, but she saw that uh, people are selling you know the parts by themselves, like their mommy to be sash and everything. And we just bundled everything, and we were one so of. You're the saying first you guys identified Amazon. a cultural thing inside the United States where. Many couples, yeah. you know, married couples, they they have an, expecting a baby. So even before the baby is born, they have this, you know, baby shower where there's gifts, there's decorations, and then maybe do maybe a ceremony to name the baby or expose the name mm -hmm. of the baby, stuff like that. Yeah. Something that is not really uh, too familiar, uh, I guess, in the Middle East to say the least, uh, but in Israel as well. 
but yeah. nevertheless your wife was able to identify that that's super interesting yes and we were the from among the first sellers on amazon selling and providing a bundles just the bundles and sets uh, for like five six decorations in one set mm -hmm. and it was a really good business for one year after um, like we were, we were implementing everything by the book and it really went good until the Chinese made the jump in. They jump in, uh, you know, in 2018, late uh, 2018. And um, uh, this was like paper products. This is like the, the butter and bread of Chinese factory. Yeah, made out of paper, and, cost of production is very low. And for them, it's yeah. uh, bonanza because they can put all their... Uh, uh, manufacturing muscle into penetrating. Exactly, and and they did penetrate the the niche and the category, and slowly by slowly it was just not profitable. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I still had the chance to even uh, uh, duplicate my business into EU and even to Australia. Uh, I was one of the first, I think, in Israel that was selling arts and crafts in Australia, and. I, um, it was really great, G good lesson, made some money, uh, got my investment back um, and started, you know, to launch other products. I started to think about different, uh, uh, other different uh, uh, brands. And, uh, but at that time, I already knew the game. Like I, I felt like, okay, I can, I can first live on that, uh, you know, on, on this uh, living. Make an income, money. basically, economically, Make financially, you can actually uh, rely, you know, find this as a reliable source of income for yourself because, you know how to find the opportunity, build it, create it, make it, you know, launch it in the market and make a profit out of it. See where the mm -hmm. trend is going, if you can stay or maybe you need to leave and maybe even develop another layer and another layer. So it makes it, um, you know, much more, exactly. um, you know, uh, in terms of confidence, you feel much more confidence uh, financially and professionally. And also I did a, a huge step now because I was able to leave my uh, kind of student work or student job. I was working in a very fancy high class restaurant when I, I did the minimum work and I had a maximum salary. This was the all about uh, making money and had the time for Amazon, but then I could really leave that job and work 24 hours in, in, on Amazon. And where were you business. living or where are you living now in Israel? Are you still in the North, uh, Carmel? Uh, no, no, I'm in the center in Ramat Gan. Uh, and um, Pretty much this was a huge shift. Yes, this was the, the huge shift in uh, in my time. Well, you know, today the time is more expensive than anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, suddenly I had lots, much, much, much more uh, time and, uh, and th that's it. And, and we started to, uh, then we decided to go with my, with my wife uh, already there, uh, my wife uh, abroad. Uh, like if you heard about digital nomading a little bit. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so you decided, you both decided to become a digital nomad, but let's touch your wife's position for a moment. Yeah. So she was mm -hmm. there with you uh, as an entrepreneur working with you or that she had a different track? No, no, she did. She was with me like 80% uh, because uh, all the technical side, you, you think it's, uh, you know, Amazon and, and building brands and everything. It sounds sexy, but it's not. It's there's a lot of stats there and numbers and, and everything. Data driven, so very data driven, the, data analytics. Yeah. And she, that, this is where she comes in to help? The, the opposite. That was my part. And she took a step back and only helping with the branding and the uh, marketing, the marketing yeah, and the everything. Packaging. Yeah, very good. And she was actually my partner all the time. When we left Israel, uh, we sell, sold everything from our really? house, all the furniture, the car, everything. And we said, this is what this, we are going to an, uh, an, an adventure. I think it's and part this of what year, 2018? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we had we had the income. We could afford it. Um, and we said, let's go to uh, see our uh, suppliers. Let's go ahead and see this, say hi uh, in China to all our suppliers, make some business trip, go to the Canton Fair in Guangzhou. And uh, we did it all. Uh, we, we were there. We were uh, in uh, Vietnam. We were to uh, Thailand. We lived a little bit, a little bit in Koh Samoy for uh, four months. And after that, you, we had, you mainly uh, focused on Asia with uh, digital, you know, because yeah. you can be a digital nomad. Yes, that's uh, that was the destination, and then we uh, settled a little bit for six months in uh, Singapore. We had friends there, and it was this was the the boost I think for my entrepreneurial fire. Really? Living in Singapore, yes, it's like living in in the future. <laughs> and uh, even though e-commerce was not you know uh, infl infiltrated there, but uh, it, it still was really inspiring working in a such environment, and. Um, this was the the big jump in my thoughts about what's next okay i have a business on amazon i was already working with my nowadays uh, uh partner pavel 
who was uh, who had a uh, software uh, Chrome extension finding the the reviewer before when it was allowed. And actually, I was his client, and we started to work every single day, you know, on Zoom on Skype, just working together on our businesses on Amazon. And first of all, this was the first time I had uh, another partner, a new partner who is an Amazon seller from from zero. Also, there was a big jump there in my knowledge and everything that we could share with, with uh, one of with another. And also we started to speak about what's next when you come back to Israel, let's do something big. Like uh, we heard, I actually was in Singapore. There is a, a headquarters of Amazon in Singapore. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there was a holiday there and I was sitting in a, in a restaurant. Next to me was uh, a senior manager from Amazon who is um, responsible from the localization of going Amazon. Uh, into new countries and there was a, already some talks about amazon going into israel and i i, I just you know come to he came to him and, and i said please in the restaurant you're saying in the restaurant in the in the restaurant yeah where, where it was the, like an event so uh it i i was able to mingle with him a little bit but i i you know my israeli nerves and my chutzpah i just came over and i said please tell me or if you can't tell me just nod is amazon is coming to israel or not and he said, of course, I can't tell you, but, you know, I, 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 uh, deliver me the message. So I, I, I came back to my partner. And I said, hey, Amazon is coming to Israel. And actually, there is no Amazon COIL yet, but um, there is something that calls local delivery. So the penetration of Amazon has already happened in uh, last year in Israel. Uh, they provided some uh, options for sellers also to do things here. And when I came back finally to Israel, we went... Uh, when did you guys get back? 2018 or already was 2019? 19, yeah, 19. And when, uh, which part of the year? A little bit. Oh, when was it? I think just before the year ended. I think in the summer, the, in the end of 2018. And then mm -hmm. I started 2019 already in Israel. Mm -hmm. And um, there was lack of agencies in Israel in a matter of um, there was a management services here and there are some uh, big uh, companies already but no no agency that provided you know a to z solutions and services like uh, drill down services from for sellers doing the hard work for them and this was the first time we said okay let's start building something and an agency and we were really good at ppc in uh, uh, paper click Amazon advertising and we started with one friend, two friends that we just came to them and said, give us the, you know, no money, just give us the opportunity to show you what we can do. Mm -hmm. And it was a great success with just, you know, two, three clients, one-on-one uh, -on -one working with them, helping with their uh, PPC. And suddenly they, they told about us to their friends and here the, here the magic happened, started to happen. Uh, we uh, traveled once again to China, this time with my partner for uh, uh, just another business trip and went into Hong Kong in, the, in uh, February 2019. And then something happened, like uh, we did some uh, lives from China and on our Facebook group, we opened a, a business page and we started to deliver some content to uh, some uh, some Amazon Israeli Amazon sellers. And uh, when we came back, suddenly we had like a dozen of, of clients knocking on our door and we said, okay, something is happening now. Now we need some help. Mm -hmm. And then we figure out uh, uh, that we need some uh, VAs and some help. And uh, there was the start of RPG Ecom in 2019. And um, just a little bit after that, uh, we partnered with another Pavel, by the way, I'm both, both of my uh, So you partner Pavel, Pavel or there's another Pavel <laughs> coming to the mix? Yes, and he was also a genius in PPC. He had a great course in Russian for, for the Russian market. And uh, when um, we heard about this course, we just said, let's come over, let's do it in Hebrew in Israel. There were no courses in Israel whatsoever about uh, our PPC. And this was the year that Amazon changed almost, almost everything about PPC lots of new features they changed the algorithm they changed everything and we were the first to deliver this uh, really up-to-date content it was a hit in hebrew uh, right in hebrew yeah the course was a hit and uh, it also provided with us with the money that we needed to scale us uh, our business and to bring more people and uh, and uh, hire uh, and um, take some uh, offices and um, i think was this was in the summer of 2019 the huge boost 
And then we started with different other, you know, opening departments, uh, creative department and uh, account management department. And by slowly by slowly we did ours. And uh, then we figure out, hey, we are working like, like a startup with the startup mode. Uh, we are, uh, we are a startup. Let's uh, raise some capital, mm -hmm. and um, that's what we did. We started to to find to look for investors. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, you know something uh, uh, big. Just a private investor, the investor, and we had some contacts, and uh, we started to speak um, in the end of the year, uh, beginning of uh, 2020 already, with some investors, and then the corona just uh, you know knocked on our door, and we saw, we thought oh. Jesus, what is going to happen with our, first of all, with our business, with the, all the negotiations with the investors and the magic happened just the opposite. Like, you know, Amazon exploded uh -huh. during COVID-19 and we said, yes, please, now let's talk. And then it happened. We raised uh, uh, half a million of dollars, half a million dollars. And um, it was big money for us. And we invested in uh, also in our company, but we also established another company for investments for digital assets. Uh, now we also um, raise money or give the opportunity to people who don't want to, you know, have their own business on Amazon, just uh, to take part in it, to invest in it in order to have a passive income. Or uh, actually, we're just saying to them, we know the job, invest in us. We will do it for you. We will share the revenue. And uh, this is how the other company, RPG ECAP, uh, also uh, started at its way. And uh, that's it. Today we have almost 30 workers uh, and offices, headquarters in, 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 the, in Tel Aviv. And uh, we are doing lots of different projects, uh, software development for ourselves. And uh, the, the school, the online school where we teach Amazon from scratch and then also advanced courses like in PPC for sellers. And um, um, also we do some conferences and um, the idea now is, uh, okay, we have a well, well familiar already in Israel, the Israeli community. And now we look abroad uh, to the States. Uh, so uh, embrace yourself, we are coming. <laughs> wow, so uh, where, to, where to pivot and change your life from um, being in the Israeli parliament, uh, you, know, doing, you know, dealing with all the politics and all the, the complexities involved. Now you guys are finding yourself, um, you know, in the complexities of e-commerce, finding tracks to success and uh, empowering the industry by, first of all, managing brands and creating brands, right? So it, it, that's create, creates growth. You have a track for learning, right? So the sellers can, you know, there's content, there's education, they can find their own path to, to growth. So that helps. If anybody is not even involved to learn or understand, but they know that there's money to be made in e-commerce, they can invest funds and have a passive income by uh, by basically uh, being a partner or investor in in a brand or, or an Amazon storefront that generates uh, revenue and income. Uh, and now, you know, once you have a good handle on the Israeli market, you feel like there's, a, you know, global expansion is available and sky's the mm -hmm. limit. Um, yeah. So it, it seems like there's... You summarized uh, everything perfect. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I found it fascinating the, 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 the multi-layered of pivots that you uh, experienced along the years. So let's do a quick recap on your entire story, right? So uh, born in uh, Moldova, right? What was the city there that you were born in? Chisinau, it's the it's the capital. What's it called? Chisinau. Chisinau. I think in Hebrew yeah. it's a Chisinau, it's, right? It's Chisinau, but when you write it in English, it's Chisinau. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, I didn't this is also that. like they say it. Yeah. Got it. So born in uh, Chisinau, and three four years old, uh, you know, migrate to uh, you know to Israel, uh, you know, spend a few years there, and then go back to Europe to Bulgaria, spend a few years there, actually finish your high school, go back to Israel, but now you're a soldier, not even a civilian anymore. Instead of doing the regular three years, you're doing five years growing other soldiers, educating other soldiers, kind of getting the, the, the first experience in really um, uh, educating and, 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 and uh, supporting others, I would say. Uh, yeah. But this is serious because in the army, you know, a lot of, you know, there's risk involved, there's guns and stuff like that, there's weapons, there's discipline. Uh, you know, you're creating warriors, right, so to speak. But now you're creating digital warriors or e-commerce warriors, so to speak. <laughs> but um, after the army, you, you go to school and you realize politics is the name of the game for you because, you know, your ethics, your, your values, your passion uh, for, your, for your country, uh, your patriotism. You do a few, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, time there. You actually got yourself into the Israeli parliament, which is an achievement on its own merit. And its own value, but um, you realize, you know, 
it's not as as as, 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 it, as it appears to be. There's much more complications involved. Plus, it's uh, you know sometimes there's a need to play dirty. So you uh, you find a new opportunity with e-commerce. You launch it. <clears throat> You know, short taste of success, but then, you know, a, a, a failure, which uh, did not knock you out of the game. On the contrary, you said, let me draft everything I got, you know, my time, my, my soul. All in. But, yeah, but my, my family, even though uh, on a theoretical level, they disagree. On the financial level, they eventually help, which is uh, pretty amazing. Even though they're all there, all the way there in Bulgaria, right? They were still there. Yes. Um, and then you relaunch, you taste success, and that led to another success of creating... Um, a partnership with Pavel, right? And then, yeah. the, which generates another success of creating a, uh, an agency, which led to another success creating a, a school, right? Effectively mm -hmm. a school with courses, <clears throat> which led to another success of you know creating an investment firm uh, 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 and raising capital and, and now seeing the world as a potential uh, uh, ground for you guys to grow. So that's kind of the story of uh, uh, Guy Hertz. And uh, you know, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, extremely interesting, unpredictable. I could not invent <laughs> this kind of story myself. Uh, so, um, I found it to be a, a great uh, example of uh, constantly learning, constantly adapting, uh, constantly, uh, you know, uh, pursuing your targets and goals, realizing who you are, how you are, what are you good at, what do you, you know, what do you connect to, what do you connect less to, and whatever you connect to, you know, you you, you try to uh, maximize the full potential. So thank you for that. All right. So now I want to kind of close the episode with two components, right? Uh, if you know, the first component will be if somebody wants to learn more about you and connect with you, where can they find you? And the last thing will be is uh, what is your message of hope and inspiration for entrepreneurs listening out there? Well, actually, the, the message is when I hear you summarizing everything I went through, I just figure out that the, the entire path I had, this is exactly the entrepreneurial path that you know, one person will face now when it goes into Amazon or online because that adjustments, the adaptation that you need to have online, everything is super dynamic. Everything is changing. What was right in Amazon two months ago is absolutely different right now. And this is exactly the mindset uh, that you need to have. Uh, and uh, when I think the, the most important message is that if you feel that I cannot handle with it, with this anymore, or I see just black. Um, wait, patience and determination is, I think, is the key. And uh, whenever you are down, there is only one way to go, right, up. And uh, this was exactly what happened with me so many times. And I think the best message, the best lesson is just hearing someone that was been there and learning from him. And if you feel like this and you hear that, and you and uh, you are uh, encountering the same problems, uh, you know. Just breathe. Everything, uh, everything. There is a solution for everything, absolutely. And um, you need to also, you know, find your own path, your your own partners, your own things that makes you happy and and um, passionate about. And and this is what I did. And uh, yeah, that was my message. Amazing. So, uh, and if somebody wants to connect with you and learn more about you, where can they find you? Well, I think uh, everybody who goes, uh, who can go to uh, Google and, and just write RPG Ecom will find us. Uh, but if not, um, you can uh, um, write us on our email, office at rpgecom.com. Got it. So office at rpgecom.com, uh, right? rpgecom.com. And then you're also very active in social media on Facebook. So look out for that for the group as well. All right, guys, thank you so much. We wish you a much more continued success for you, for the both Pavels, for your wife, for everybody in the team. Um, you know, I thank everybody for listening and joining with us today. Uh, until next time, stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.